Welcome to the Creative Pain channel. Today we're going to be discussing how to illustrate in perspective and add grain and texture to your illustration in the Creative Pain style. So a lot of you are familiar with this illustration I did a while back called The Cure. This is something that I've heard on Instagram quite a few times. How do you execute this style? How do you do this? What tools use there? So this is kind of going to be a rundown for how to do that. This is not going to be a beginner tutorial by any shot, but it's going to tell you how to get this style in the most effective way. So what you'll need, you'll need Adobe Illustrator CC, Adobe Photoshop, and some sort of drawing tablet. I would suggest a Wacom tablet. I personally use a Wacom Cintiq tablet. Uh, that seems to get the job done and it really helps speed the process along. I would allow yourself to have at least four hours to do this. This is what it took me to execute this illustration. The next step is gonna be getting your perspective. So what I start with generally is the principal shape of the object. So just using your shape building tools and building just the outline of what this shape is gonna be is gonna be huge. I started with the reference material of this little vaccine bottle. From that vaccine bottle, I illustrated the top portion of the cap and that gave me the central angles that I'm gonna use throughout this whole illustration. So you notice that I made these ovals and I'm gonna to continue to copy and paste those same ovals onto each other, duplicate them, and then drag them underneath and constantly use your shift key so that everything is going up and down. So you'll notice that this bottle is built upon a lot of the same angles. Uh, generally, my vertical lines are all straight up and down. Always keep those consistent throughout every element of this piece that, that have that vertical plane to it. And then everything else that has angles are generally pulled from the same angle. I had my basic oval that was gonna be consistently used. So I just copied and pasted and continue to drag those down. I use the transformation tool quite a bit, which is uh, Command E. And whenever you have that, you can skew things along the left or right or top or bottom plane of that object. And again, always shrink down from the center. So if you use the command shift option, and then as you're dragging that shape, you'll notice that it'll pull from the center of that shape. So everything is aligned perfectly. So another tip for wrapping these labels, you'll notice that a lot of my illustrations sometimes have these branded labels that I have wrapping around cylinders or wrapping around some sort of object within that illustration. So here's a quick tip on how I usually get that effect. If you start with designing the label that you want on there as just a flat rectangle that you know it's roughly about the size and height of what's gonna be on the bottle. So design that out, have all your type on there, have all the little elements and embellishments that you want. Once you finalize the label, go ahead and click and select that entire thing and drag it into your symbols panel. And by doing so, you're gonna then create a new symbol. Go ahead and label this whatever you need, but it's probably best to just label it as label. So once you've created that symbol, we're now gonna go ahead and create a 3D cylinder. Begin with a rectangle and try to delete one side of that rectangle, which will then give you this shape. And then with that shape, we're gonna go click on the 3D effect dropdown. Once your 3D object is created, go and open the 3D Revolve option panel. With the Revolve panel open now, you'll see that you have this little dialog where you can preview. And if you preview that, you'll now notice that your rectangle turned into a cylinder. Go ahead and click on the map art. And with that open, you'll now notice that you're accessing each panel of this cylinder. You can scroll on down and you'll see the actual symbol that you created earlier where we dragged and dropped it click on that and then as you'll notice then that is now mapped out on this preview of a cylinder and once you have that in the right place go ahead and click OK and then you're gonna get back to your 3D revolve option panel 
go ahead and click OK on that too. And now you'll see that you have this 3D cylinder with your mapped out label on it, all in the appropriate angles that you need. So with that cylinder selected, go on up to Objects, go down to Expand Appearance. Once you do that, you'll then notice that it's no longer an effect, it is now a shape. So I typically then delete all of the cylinder portions of that and just leave the label. Don't touch the label, just delete everything else around that. And now you're left with just the label in that angle and perspective that you needed. So all your text and everything like that is appropriately angled and wrapped. And make sure you're placing the label around the same place that you had it on the 3D object that you just deleted. Now go ahead and zoom on in and now start distressing the label, like add little tears in it. It's really easy to do. just go ahead and select your label and I generally just plot points. So with your pen tool, place a couple points around the edge of your label, generally three at a time, and then take the center point and go ahead and move that in to that rectangle so that you have a little triangle that dips down. Those are gonna be your tears. Now's a good time to go ahead and do a once over on the illustration and make sure you're fine tuning all your angles. Make sure everything's lining up. We want to go ahead and perfect all these little angles now. And let's go ahead and also make sure our color palette and shading is, is accurate to what we want because what we're going to go to next is dragging it all into Photoshop. After you've fine-tuned everything in Illustrator and you've already adjusted all your angles and made sure everything is aligned and everything looks about accurate for your perspective, go ahead and copy and paste this whole illustration into Photoshop. Copy and paste the bottle as one object and paste it into Photoshop and then go back and copy and paste the actual drop shadow that I created in Illustrator and paste that into Photoshop along with grabbing the color of the background and let's go ahead and bring that in Photoshop as well. Once you've dragged everything into Photoshop and you're in your Photoshop document, go ahead and start making layers above your vector shapes. These are gonna be very crucial to the layering of the textures and the different adjustment layers that was gonna be needed for this next step. A good way to build our texture layers is by selecting the actual vector layer and holding command when you click on that layer. And you'll notice that you'll get the little marching ants just around that particular shape and then start building our layers above that. And since that vector object is still selected, as we build our layers above it, we're only able to texturize within those marching ants. And that's going to really help us just hone in the textures around these particular objects so you don't get too messy and, and your textures don't bleed in with other things around it. So while we're centralizing our textures, we're just gonna do a, just a subtle once over. And again, I'm just using a, a subtle brush, subtle noise brush to be exact. And I am then just building up on that. I'm, I'm going along the edges. I'm going once over like the entire object. And I'm doing this with different colors. I generally think of my layers as lights to darks and I'll build like a subtle light layer that's using tans or whites and I'll just get my highlights in. And then I also build other layers that are just strictly uh, distressing the label or distressing the bottles. And I'm just brushing the, the color that is right next to it over the label to give that illusion that the label's torn or that it's just really rugged. And you know, as you start building this and just getting really in the details, you'll notice it, it looks really great when you zoom back out. So it's definitely important to 
you know, take advantage of when you're zoomed in and, and just add as much detail as possible because it all adds and builds as a whole and, and gives that illusion of, of a 3D object. And I'm just, you know, subtly adding shadows where needed. Uh, I'm trying to think about where my light source is and where that would be at on this object. And I think one of the most important brushes that I use, and I think everyone has this as just comes with a standard Photoshop, is a tapered brush. I'm generally using a one point tapered brush um, in various colors, typically black and white. And I'm just using that as my shadows and my highlights. So alternating between those two colors, but centralizing around that same brush. And I just go back and forth and I just add in little details, whether that's you know a little tear here or maybe a little crack in the paper. And I just build that by just drawing on top of the, uh, the objects and new layers. A good thing to keep in mind whenever you're working through Photoshop at this stage is labeling and organizing your layers as much as possible. Uh, you're gonna build up quite a bit of layers and they're gonna get kind of messy and it's pretty easy to, to lose track of where you're at and you know where everything is in terms of organization. I, I still struggle with this, so I'm always trying to perfect it, but it always helps me to label everything and only work within that label. For example, I, I'm labeling things as dark texture, light texture, highlights, shadows, and each one of those are on different layers. So just take the time and keep doing your once overs and adding more layers as you're going forward. And I'm just using those same brushes, uh, again, just a subtle noise brush. I'm using my tapered brush and I have like this kind of little torn like tear looking brush where I'll just, you know, add that wherever I need to and, and then start adding my effects on it. A lot of times I add a lot of rugged looking text and some kind of like burned and torn textures. I'm simply just using the brush tool and now zoom into all those little tears that we did in Illustrator and we're just going to add some, some lines around it. We're going to kind of go around the edge and we're just going to add some tears. I like to approach this as if drawing thunderbolts or think about lightning and how that kind of strikes through the air. That's typically how I'm drawing my lines. Hopefully if you've done all that correct, you will get a, an effect like I have here. And I found the best way to finalize it is to just add a couple other adjustment layers on top, whether that's messing with your curves or your vividness or your saturation. That really just helps bring out the overall effect and give it sort of like this vintage pop that I, I generally have in my work. Zoom back out, do like an overview and, and see any other area that's really not registering with the light source that we're trying to portray and also the depth that we want. Um, maybe you have to add another highlight. Maybe you have to add a little more noise with the brush or, or better yet, maybe you have to reduce some of the noise or reduce some of the glares. At that point, you got all your layers hopefully separated. You can just go back into those layers and change that. So maybe even change your layers to different type of blend modes. And a lot of times that does help quite a bit to really get those uh, you know, different contrasts that you might want. Uh, some of the ones that I, I use is you know, multiply quite a bit. I'll do overlay or maybe a soft light. A soft light's a really good blend mode to go with. And you'll see in my layers panel where I was kind of playing with that and you know, just adjusting as I went along. Again, I didn't really have a real defiant um, path for how many layers I needed. Uh, I could definitely do a little better with the organization of these, but the whole premise is just to build on top of each other and, and try to separate it so you can go back and edit it later. And if you add enough grain in there, you'll have something really vivid and highly distressed. It just takes time. Again, there's no fancy brushes that are being really used here. Uh, just a handful. I'll have a link down below on where you can get those or where you could probably find them. So I hope this tutorial was able to help you guys achieve this creative pain look and overall vibe. Uh, again, this is nothing that's completely structured. Uh, I, I would almost insist that you build upon this and make it your own. Uh, again, just layering things is very important for this. 
but if you have any comments or if anything was you know a little unclear or if I didn't really explain something too much please please leave a comment down below and I'll definitely get to it and try to clarify anything that might be a little confusing so thanks again for believing the creative pain and follow me and subscribe to all the channels that you see down below and you can follow any updates on the creative pain Instagram and also the creative pain website so stay tuned for some more cool stuff down the road and uh, stay creative Thank you.